There's some new stuff that we found inside these 365 tenants, some of the new setup that Microsoft are doing, mainly around this MFA. Now, I want to show you something because this is the brand new tenant. And I've just created a brand new user called test user here. And when I log into them, I just want to show you something here because if we go into org settings and have a look at multi-factor authentication, and just do the configure there, you'll get to the normal screen. You can see it's disabled, right? Now, if we go in and just do a private window, and let's go in as that user, which is uh, got this incorrect test user at car, oh, excuse me, dot com, and password there, you'll see it's saying you got security defaults turned on and it needs to have the uh, protection on the account, which is the MFA. Even though we've disabled it, we said we don't want MFA, it's taking over and doing this. Now, from a from a testing of a tenant scenario, uh, I'm going to show you how to turn that off so it doesn't ask us for that. Um, and then I want to show you a few more things about these MFA settings, which, uh, which is, as I say, is quite new and actually pretty cool. So we'll just come back out of there and we will go into this here. Now, where we do this is we go into the Azure Active Directory. And once again, we're getting it for the, the demo. One, I'm going to say skip for now because it's, uh, we just let it carry on. And you can see if we don't set up the MFA, it's going to keep asking us. Even though, like I, you saw before, it's turned off. So where it is, is we go to Azure Active Directory and we're going down to properties down here. And we're looking here, manage security defaults. And we need to go turn that off. It's going to ask us a few questions. Um, we just say, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Test tenant, a bit of a demo, doesn't really matter. So let's now get rid of that. We'll let that uh, continue. So with that set, it does take effect pretty quickly. So let's just go in back in now. Go to portal.office.com, same thing. Go back in as our test user. in and there you go now we're in no MFA is being asked for which is good um, you know from a testing perspective we don't want to be bothered with those things if we're just um, you know, messing with the tenant um, however we really should have MFA turned on it, it is one of those things that is definitely a good thing to have so let me show you what is new in there and what I want to show you this new cool stuff is in settings again, if we go to our active users and we just hit multi-factor authentication just right here. It takes us to this screen, which you may not have seen before, but it's talking about uh, uh, enforcing multi-factor authentication. Now, the new stuff I wanna talk about is if we hit next on this, you can see it's saying it can configure the adaptive MFA using conditional access, which is good. So we'll say yes, recommended for all templates will enforce all of this and save configuration. And you can see it takes a, takes a minute to go through. So we'll come back to that. And there we go. Configuration saved and enforced. Now let's have a look at next and we can now go into manage conditional access. What's back? Look at that. So we'll just say skip for now for this particular user, the admin user. We will come back and do it, obviously. But now you can see it's created all of these policies for MFA. Rather than just doing that security default and just turning it on for everybody, it's now got a lot more granular. There's a lot more you can do in these things. So let's have a look at MFA for admins. So what it's saying is there is it's just putting a conditional access policy automatically in for you, uh, requiring MFA for anybody with admin access, which really is um, a heck of a lot easier than trying to set all these things up yourself. So definitely go through and, and look at what um, policies it's set up for you and, and just make sure they are right for your organization. But what I want to just go back to is in here and properties, is we'll go back to this 
security defaults. And notice how security defaults is still turned off. Um, what we're now doing is we've, we've overtaken this by putting in those conditional access policies instead. So this doesn't uh, change from the setting we made it based on what we're doing with the MFA, but it is there. Now let's just go back out here and look at our active users. So if you did click on multi-factor authentication in here, it will take you back to that screen which we just explored. What we really want to get to is the individual screen for the MFA. So to go to that one, we are going to need to do it slightly differently. We go to the org settings and we go down to multi-factor authentication in there and configure multi-factor. And that will take us to that screen here, which really you can then have it turning off and on per user. I would prefer you not to do it through here, but do it through the conditional access policies and explore them that way instead. That's a, certainly a much better way of doing things. So let's have a quick recap of how to get to those conditional access policies. What you want to do is go through on your normal admin center, go down to the Azure Active Directory, and if you go in there, you'll find there's a security tab down the bottom, and under security, there is conditional access. And this is where everything is set for these policies which you uh, provide. Now, as that test user doesn't fall into any of these categories, we're going to create a brand new policy which is going to apply for all users to enforce MFA on everybody. So we just do a new policy here. We're going to call it all users MFA. And so all users and workloads, we're going to include all users. As you can see there, lock yourself out. It's giving us a bit of a warning to say that obviously all users is a important thing to, to, you know, something to, to make yourself aware of. We will go into cloud apps. We'll say all cloud apps. Once again, there's the policies there. Conditions, no particular policy uh, conditions we want there. Just, just let it go across the whole thing. And we will say grant access to that require multi-factor authentication. That is the only thing we want to do. We don't want to have to make sure the device is compliant or anything like that. This is purely just for MFA. And that, yeah, this is what I want you to see, because this is quite new. At the moment, it says this would include our admin user in this policy. Do you want us to automatically exclude you? So we'll say, yes, we do want to exclude that. And we are going to turn that on. So you'll notice when I do the creation of that, it creates it for us. And we go back into there. You can see everything is all good here. But if we look at the all users, if we look at the exclude list, you can see we are excluded. We do want to have that one, that particular one excluded while we're doing this testing phase. Now they can take a few minutes to take effect. So if you were to do that immediately, let's have a look at that. Go in back in as the uh, test user and see what happens. So this is doing it virtually straight away afterwards. Let's we'll see if it has taken effect as yet. And yes, it looks like it has. And notice we're not getting the notice about security defaults, um, and we're not getting the option to skip for a number of days either. This is enforcing the MFA. They have to do it. That's that's all there is. So once we hit next, it will then take us through and will not let us in until we do this MFA setup for this particular user. So that's all well and good. Well, you know, not a problem. We've all seen the authenticator app before, so I won't bother with that. But really setting up that policy very, very quickly is just including all users and saying, we're going to put all cloud apps on there. We could select them and say, um, you know, we only want to have uh, you know, particular apps in there. Uh, so I'm filter, we're going to select, sorry, and, and say we only want to have, you know, against Office 365 and, and the other items we want. I'm just going to say all, all cloud apps. That's really what we want to do with the MFA. Now, we don't have any conditions, and really we're just saying from a grant perspective is really require multi-factor authentication. So as I say, quite a very, very simple policy, but you can see it was effective straight away that, that it really did enforce that MFA immediately. So as we've set that policy up without having MFA actually configured for our admin user, and we've done that, uh, logged on as that admin user, what's going to happen when we log out and here, 
and come back in again. Let's check it out. I'll have a nice fresh one there. Just go in like that and go in with our admin account and the password. Drop that in there. And we are straight in, which is a little bit unexpected, to be honest with you. I would expect the uh, the policy to kick in there. So let's go and check out and see what is wrong with our policy. Is your ID? Because it should be MFA for admins set on there. I don't think. Ah, look at that. What it's done, sneaky little thing it is, it's excluded that uh, the, the, the admin account we're using from the policies, it's actually done it for all of those policies by the look of it. I mean, somebody might be able to confirm if that was there before or not, but I'm not sure that it was. So let's take that out and say understand. Save that. So we'll say save. Now remember, I haven't set up the MFA for the admin user yet. So it is not there. So what's going to happen is if I come out of here and out of here, jump back out. Go in again with this account. Yep, very long and not in my head. And so now there. Now we get the prompt. So it is actually letting us go through and set up the MFA, which we will actually go and do this time, just to be good. And uh, so just a quick one on how to do that. If you don't know, if you've got the Authenticator app, just download it. Click next. We say set up. We do the ad. We do the work or school account and say scans QR code. Next on that, you'll get presented with the QR code and you just scan that on your phone. Obviously, you can't see my phone, but it's there. And we say next, and it will then do a quick test. And they'll say, Yep, do we want to approve that? Yes, we do on the phone. Good. And it should pop in and say, We are done. There we go. Next and done. That keeps it nice and secure. In with the MFA turned on for the admin user, which is obviously beneficial to all. So yeah, as I said, a bit of a, a real world sort of view on how things work and, and you can see some of the things that, that happen on those accounts. Um, hope that was useful. Uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. And I'll talk to you again soon.